Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the sequel to 2016's outstanding shooter, Doom. I will admit, when the first trailers and reveals came out for Doom Eternal, I wasn't phased. But after finishing 2016 Doom's last year, I couldn't wait. Well, the wait, of course, is finally over and Doom Eternal is available now, but how is the Doom Slayer four years later? Has it adapted and evolved from Doom 2016, or is it a reskin like every single Call of Duty game? Doom Eternal takes place, as you guessed it, after Doom 2016, where the denizens of hell have arrived and started slaughtering everyone on Earth, and it's up to you as the Doom Slayer to rip and tear, that's right, I fucking said it, through every demon on Earth and save humanity. You'll start off hunting three demonic priests, all of which are located in different areas. Now, the first hell priest you go after will be the first level teaching you how to play, and you'll need to learn how to play if it's been a hot minute since you've played Doom. Without going into any spoilers, you'll go through some amazing environments. Welcome, Sid. Is my time ready now? Let's see if you're strong enough to survive this cursed city. You'll see destroyed cities. Giant titans roam around with temples on their back, frozen castles. So, if you were a little bored of the constant red of Mars in Doom 2016, then your wish is granted. Between missions, you'll also be going to a little home or hub area known as the Fortress of Doom, which is basically the Doom Slayer's Fortress of Solitude, where you'll be able to go into the Reptorium. Yep, it's actually called that, where you'll be able to practice with your weapons, abilities, and movement on demons which are being kept prisoners. While practicing in the Riptorium, Mick Gordon's Rip and Tear will also play. For those of you that wish that Doom 2016 had more of a story element, like me, then Doom Eternal has got it covered. There's in-game cutscenes and further story elements you can read as you progress through the story. The story and the cutscenes aren't in your face as a Call of Duty or Gears of War, but Doom isn't about story, it's about fucking up demons. The combat in Doom Eternal is like Doom 2016, bet on crack, cocaine and two bottles of Smirnoff Double Black at once. For those of you who don't really know what I mean, it's really fucking good. If you've never gotten around to Doom 2016 or it's been a while since you've played it, the first person styles of games like Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty and Battlefield will not work in Doom. If you stand still in Doom Eternal, you get killed quicker than James Franco in Alien Covenant. Fuck me, that movie was a pile of shit. <laughs> Gory executions are back, and they're just as brutal if not more so than what we got in 2016. While I was on the last boss of Doom Eternal, I was seeing executions on zombies that I'd not seen in the three days it took me to finish Doom Eternal. Just like in Doom 2016, if you're stuck for health, doing some damage and launching into a gory kill would give you a large amount of health back. Exercise caution whenever you're starting up Doom Eternal, as these executions are enough to make some people gag. You'll break a demon's arm and shove their exposed bone into their skull. You'll hack away at a Doom Hunter's skull, venting out your frustration with each slash. These executions make Wolverine look like a pushover. Returning from Doom 2016 is the chainsaw, and just like in 2016, it's used to saw enemies in half, which causes them to spew out ammo. So, when you run low on ammo, the chainsaw is your go-to. Though, again, it does run on fuel, which you'll find fuel pickups around each level. It's worth noting this time around, the chainsaw is more essential, as when you're out of ammo, you're stuck with no weapons. There is no pistol in Doom Eternal to be used as a get-out-of-jail-free card. 
If you're a fan of the old school Doom, you'll also be able to center the weapons in the middle of the screen, just like you could in Doom 2016, and it's fantastic. It did take me a little while to get used to it, but hey, it's a really fucking nice touch for hardcore Doom fans. What you'll notice in Doom Eternal during combat is enemy damage. As you fire rounds into demons, you'll notice that their flesh and their muscles will tear away exposing bone. As you can see here, we're firing rounds into the Hell Knight, and look as it rips and tears, a great Mick Gordon song by the way, away from the character model. Seeing a revenant with exposed, bony legs will always make me laugh. You'll get this with every enemy variant in Doom Eternal as well. Rather than in Doom 2016 by destroying a summoning mark which causes demons to flush out, you'll have to clear the area of demons. Now, these areas are marked as red on the map and when you do this, you'll be rewarded with a weapon point. We'll talk about weapon points a little bit later. You'll also find two different challenges to play during missions. You'll have secret encounters which are optional and a bit like the summoning points which we got in 2016, but they're purple. This will summon demons, but you'll need to defeat them within a certain time limit, and you'll be awarded with a weapon point. Any resources spent in a secret encounter will not be restored afterwards, and if you run out of time, you fail. There are also Slayer Gates, which again, are optional. These are, as the game says, and I can confirm, 100% intense encounters. Ammo and extra life spent again will not be restored. Completion of the Slayer Gate will give you 3 weapon points and an Imperium Key. Now these keys are used to unlock a special weapon in the Fortress of Doom. If you complete all enemy counters, including the optional ones, you'll be awarded up to 10 weapon points each level, and we'll get to weapon points. Just like in Doom 2016, you'll start off with the combat shotgun, then quickly unlocking the heavy cannon, plasma rifle, which looks different from Doom 2016, rocket launcher, and so on and so on. Of course, you'll be able to unlock the super shotgun, which is still just as awesome as it was in 2016, but you've essentially got Batman's grappling gun attached to the bottom of it. By activating this, you'll be pulled towards your target, so you'll be able to get nice and close with the powerhouse that is the Super Shotgun. The way you get the Super Shotgun is even better. You'll take control of a Revenant, and you'll be able to bring the beloved Super Shotgun back to the Doomslayer. What you do with the Demon is up to you. As you progress through levels, you'll be able to find weapon attachment or modification cases similar to what we got in 2016, which you'll be able to equip modifications, of course, to your gun. The combat shotgun will have the grenade launcher ability or be able to turn the combat shotgun into an auto shotgun, which was my preferred attachment. For the heavy cannon, you'll be able to have it fire small rockets or attach a scope and make it more precise, which you'll need to do to make combat easier. With a scope on the heavy cannon, you'll be able to target the weapons demons are actually armed with and destroy them. You'll be able to shoot the arm cannons off a Mancubus or the turret off the back of an Arachnotron. When you remove the weapons from demons, it'll limit what they can actually do, forcing them most of the time to come in nice and close, which is where the Super Shotgun comes in handy. You'll be able to get an upgrade for the chain gun, turning it into a mobile turret just like we got in 2016, or a deployable energy shield around you, turning you into Bastion from Overwatch. The Ballista, which is basically a rail rifle, for once came in handy with a new enemy type, but again we'll get to that later. The Destroyer Blade upgrade for the Ballista allows you to charge up the weapon and launch a blade that will cleave enemies as it fires.
When you choose a modification that you like, you'll also be able to further upgrade that mod. For example, the full auto attachment for the combat shotgun, you'll be able to ready the full auto mode speed by 50%, increase your movement speed by 50%, and a quick recovery skill, which increases the recovery speed by 50%. Once you've unlocked all of these upgrades, you'll then be able to master the weapon, which will give it one final ability. The auto shotgun will give you the salvo extender. Now, killing a demon with the full auto mod will drop shell ammo, giving you the potential to just keep firing and not having to worry about running out of ammo. Now, it wouldn't be a Doom game without the weapon that made its way into other games and even film, the BFG. The BFG is back, baby, and it does exactly what it's always done. The very best there is, when you absolutely, positively got to kill every motherfucker in the room, except no substitutes. If you've played Doom 2016, there's no real changes in the BFG. It still decimates everything in the room except for boss enemy types. But if you're surrounded by a bunch of low-level demons and you're just wanting to focus on that boss in front of you, the BFG will definitely come in handy. Sadly though, there isn't a load of ammo you can find for the BFG in Doom Eternal and it can only hold two shots max for the weapon. The Doom Slayer will also have new abilities that he can use. You'll be able to dash, which of course can be used in combat, but is also used a lot for the platforming sections. You'll also have a shoulder-mounted grenade launcher, which fires either the standard grenades or frost grenades that will freeze demons. On top of that, you'll also have the flame belch, which is basically a flamethrower. Now, damaging or executing enemies while they're on fire will cause them to drop armor for the Doom Slayer. So you'll be able to farm armor if your health is at 100%. The good thing with the shoulder mounted grenade launcher and the flamethrower is they're rechargeable so you won't need to pick up additional ammo for these, you'll just need to let them cool down. You'll also have a new melee ability that will charge up with each gory kill you perform called the blood punch. This will deal a load of damage to cluttered smaller enemies and will drop health too, and will upgrade slightly as you progress through Doom Eternal. Now, Doom Eternal's last weapon is the Crucible. Now, without going into any spoilers about this, it is essentially the energy sword that we saw at the end of Doom 2016. With the new environments you enter in Doom Eternal, you'll come against some new enemy types. Multiple times during the campaign, you'll trudge through blood or purple goo. It's never really explained what the goo is, but it prevents you from jumping and dashing. Either way, you'll come up against these giant tentacles that pop out of the ground. Now at first, they'll get you jumping out of your seat, but then you'll start to know when they're about to jump off and you'll have your shotgun at the ready. Besides tentacles, Doom Eternal gives us a load of new enemy variants, including the aforementioned Arachnotron, which are basically giant spiders that have a turret on their back and can fire out some mid-range grenades. The Doom Hunters are a new boss demon. They look a little bit like the Warhammer Destroyer for you 40k fans. They're covered with an energy shield which will force you to use your plasma rifle to break their shield. And while it's down momentarily, you'll need to deal as much damage as you can. Deal enough damage and their floating barge will explode, causing the Doom Hunter to eject and float around the field dealing less damage and have no shields. You've got all the returning demons from Doom 2016 like the Hell Knight, the Imps, the Cacodemons and more. Now fun tip when facing off against the Cacodemons, which I'm sure you've already heard. You can fire a grenade from your shoulder mounted launcher into their mouths, causing them to go into an instant glory kill mode, which works wonders if you're low on health. Set them on fire with the flame belt and they'll give out armor instead. You were never one of us. But by far the coolest demon and the biggest douchebag in Doom Eternal are the Marauders. I mean, look at how fucking dope these guys are. They make Thanos look like a bitch. Outside of the carnage in the main campaign, you'll be given loads of platforming sections and small puzzles where you'll be able to find collectibles such as cheat codes, which can be used later when you replay missions, collectible vinyl toys, and fuck me, I really, really want Bethesda to release these toys in real life. I would love a Marauder toy. 
Anyway, you'll also be able to find, in my opinion, the greatest collectible vinyl records. These can be anything from the original Doom themes to Quake and even some references for hardcore ID software nerds. You'll be able to turn on the vinyls in the Fortress of Doom and they'll play constantly either until you turn them off or you change the song. You'll also find suit upgrade points which can be used to, well, upgrade your suit. You'll be able to upgrade five different areas such as the environment spec which will have you immune to a barrel explosion, the frag grenade launcher spec which can be used to stack two grenades at one time, or the exploration upgrades which will highlight collectibles on your map. The map in Doom Eternal is 10 times more useful than what it was in 2016, and towards the end of the game I was constantly opening my map looking for nearby collectibles. Runes will give the Doom Marine perks like perform glory kills faster, enemies killed with equipment such as the grenade launcher will decrease the recharge time, or being able to temporarily slow down time while in the middle of the air. You'll also be able to have 3 equipped at the one time, but there are a total of 9 runes, so you'll need to select the runes that match your playstyle. On top of that, yes, there's a load to do in Doom Eternal. You'll have Sentinel Crystals, which are used to further upgrade the Doom Slayer. Fuck me, you can honestly play Doom Eternal your way. These crystals will give you increased health, armor, and ammo capacity. Though they're broken up into subsections, using a crystal to unlock the health and armor upgrades under the Quick Draw Belt section will give the Flamethrower a quicker cooldown timer. There's a total of six different subcategories and you'll be able to upgrade armor, ammo and health four times over with all of these unlocked. You'll also be able to change what the Doom Marine looks like. We'll have a standard outfit from the start of the game but you'll also be able to unlock his suit from 2016's Doom, a gladiator style outfit which looks kinda cool, and yes, as you've probably already seen, the OG Doom suit from, well, Doom. I'm serious, that guy doesn't scare me. I'd like to see him try. <laughs> Now we did play a mission with the gladiator style outfit while we went up against the marauder for the first time and while it does look cool I couldn't go past the OG doom suit. To unlock these suits you need to find batteries in levels which are used to open doors in the fortress of doom. Two batteries are needed per door so at the start of doom eternal you need to decide what you want more, weapon or suit upgrades or a new skin. Of course we chose the new skins. On top of finding these batteries you can also earn them by completing challenges in levels. By completing all three challenges through each level, you'll be awarded with a battery. There's fuckloads to do in Doom Eternal. It goes without saying, Mick Gordon has done it again. During my time with the campaign, I would stop traversing a level just to sit and listen to the score. Now, Joe Rogan has said it was annoying background music, but Joe can honestly get fucked. Anyway, Mick Gordon's score not only makes each slaughter entertaining, but there's even some sweet throat music that puts you right in the mood. Check out the background music inside this demonic temple. I mean, you heard the BFG edition score in Doom 2016, and it was in their review, and there are some sweet songs in this score that I cannot wait for. As soon as this baby hits Spotify, you best start listening. The addition of finding vinyl records scattered throughout levels in Doom Eternal is also fantastic. Whoever thought of this idea honestly needs a promotion. Even as I was writing this review, I had my Doom Slayer sitting in the Fortress of Doom and I was listening to the Doom 3 theme song and damn, it's still fucking awesome. Now the Marauder is a new enemy variant in Doom Eternal and it looks fucking awesome, but... They're a fucking bitch to deal with. If you're too far away, he'll shoot you with these plasma attacks from his power axe. If you get too close, he'll hit you with his super shotgun. That's right, he has a super shotgun. If you try to shoot him, he'll block it with a power shield. And he also dashes around the map. The only way you can damage him is when he's charging to attack. His eyes flash green and a noise will sound. Basically, you can only hit him when he's mid-swing. Now, you'll be able to engage him from mid-range. Basically, if you're too far away, he attacks with his axe. If you're too close, he attacks with his super shotgun. If you try to shoot him in general with anything, he'll flat out block it with his energy shield. Now, once you've dealt some damage to him, he'll shoot at magical dogs like Nightwolf for Mortal Kombat. 
which thankfully go down in one hit, though it's hard enough managing this fucker, let alone his dog. You'll take on these guys a few times in the campaign, and the first time we fought them, it took us 20 fucking minutes. Now, towards the end game, I did get some advice from the Aussie Doom Slayer himself. Um, all top left. Uh huh. What's gonna say? Reload? I'm on it. Um, since. Oh, sorry, <laughs> shot. Thanks. <laughs> which I can 100% vouch for is solid advice. Use the ballista against this jizz bag and he'll go down in roughly five body shots or two to the face. The Doom Slayer is also armed with what can only be described as the Predator's wrist blade. You'll see it multiple times in executions, but your melee attack is just a punch. Now, as I mentioned, you won't have a pistol in Doom Eternal, and I did say once I unlocked weapons in Doom 2016, I never used the pistol. But what's the point of having this awesome wrist-mounted blade and only using it in execution? Speaking of weapons, the ammo capacity in Doom Eternal ain't that great, at least in my opinion. Now, this is my own personal opinion here, fuckboys, but you only be able to carry a maximum of 180 rounds for the heavy cannon and the chain gun. That's including upgrading your ammo capacity. Again with a shotgun, you only be able to carry 24 shells at the one time, or 12 with the super shotgun as it fires two rounds in one hit. Now I was running out of ammo quicker than supermarkets were running out of toilet paper. Normally you're supposed to use the chainsaw to shred through an enemy and gain more ammo. I understand this concept, and the chainsaw runs out of fuel just like it does in 2016. Depending on what enemy you use the chainsaw on, depends on how much fuel is used. Normal zombies and soldiers, one bar of fuel but majority of the enemy variants in Doom Eternal require three bars of fuel to take them down. Multiple times in the campaign, I'd either run out of ammo or fuel, or had two bars of fuel and the enemy required three to take them down. Thankfully, the grenades and the flame belt recharge as this is the only option to take out enemies when you're out of everything. Now this isn't a negative, but a warning for console players. As you can see, I play this on an Xbox One, well for you nerds an Xbox One X, and Doom Eternal is somewhat made for PC. I found at first my reaction time wasn't as quick as the demons. I thought at first I just needed to get used to how Doom played and adapt, but then I realised the standard controller input settings aren't as quick as they need to be. If you're playing this on an Xbox and have an Elite controller, I highly recommend having a profile set up on the controller solely for Doom Eternal. Having the controller sensitivity up and the back paddle buttons map for some of your special abilities is a must on higher difficulty. I started the difficulty on Ultra Violence at a request from a mate, otherwise I'd be dead to them, and got fucked up more than Riley Reid at a house party. Doom Eternal is what the Dark Knight was for Batman Begins, Aliens to Alien, and The Empire Strikes Back was for A New Hope. The combat is polished, the story is more prevalent, and the score. Honestly, I'm not a huge metal music fan, but since I reviewed Doom 2016, my Spotify has been Doom 2016 soundtrack, Brass Against, and Revenge of the Crash Tones, and honestly, I am 100% okay with this. For whatever reason you've never looked at the most recent iteration of Doom, then you need to sort that out. Forewarning, the combat is so brutal that I needed to play Mortal Kombat 11 just to take a break from the carnage. Fatality. Spawn wins. Flawless victory. Sidebar, why the fuck isn't the Doom Slayer in Mortal Kombat? It would have been a lot better than the Terminator. Anyway, Doom Eternal is most likely the last Doom game we'll get on current gen consoles, and fuck me, what a way to go out. We'll definitely remember Doom Eternal when it comes to our Game of the Year episode on the show, and is by far the best single player first person shooter I've ever played. Thank you.